Hello Big Geeks! This week we're doing a unusually serious episode, I guess. Oof. My voice has gone higher because <laughs> we're doing a <laughs> doing a controversial bit of hashtag content. Um, so very, very recently, Cloudwater, you know, frequently voted one of the best breweries in the world. They were top five on rate beer, um, generally adored by the beer geek industry, have gone into supermarkets. They have, they have. Now They've gone into supermarkets in a very individual way. And what we want to do first is talk about that in individual way. Because I think that the best way to talk about it is to talk about the positives first. So if you want to talk about supermarkets, you want to talk about you know the pricing of beer, the value of craft beer, and indeed the, the ethics of craft beer, we're going to do that at the end of the video. But to start with, we are going to champion the fact that four amazing sets of people and four amazing breweries have had their businesses changed as a result of what Cloudwater have done and we're going to taste the beers and hopefully, hopefully tell you that they're delicious. So when, this isn't a, a puff piece and again this isn't about throwing mud either. This is just, we're, we're sort of commenting on the fact that Cloudwater have gone into supermarkets but they've gone in in a, in a different way and they've, I would say they've almost, they've strung on their way in and they've championed some small independent businesses to get them through the door with them. Absolutely. So, so this box has four beers that are collaborations with Cloudwater with breweries that were, were underrepresented and didn't have the chance ever, possibly ever, to have that kind of opportunity of being in Tesco and making the kind of profit that's possible off the back of that. Yeah. Um, they're all minority owned. So there's two black owned breweries. There's one um, trans owned brewery and trans campaigner. And then there's one Indian owned brewery that also only makes low alcohol beer. So it's a really diverse group. And it's a group of people who have, have been underrepresented in craft beer for a long, long time, for a million reasons that we might get into at the end of this. So this is a beer box with a purpose. Exactly. And that's why it's called beer with with big ideas so we're going to dive into these and see what we think here we go this cost 10 pound in tesco not a sentence i thought i'd ever say on the craft beer <laughs> channel <laughs> they're all ipas as well right? they're all ipas we've got a low alcohol ipa and then three six percent ipas with different hops slightly different yeah. recipes brewed um and conceived with cloud water and nice. brewed at brew dog nice under contract okay so that cloud water never sort of took away any um any volume from the independent trade uh, so we'll do a lucky dip, shall we? Yeah, let's do uh, it. Because you can't see which one's which. And we've picked up the low alcohol. Ah, uh, great stuff. I mean, that's probably the best way to do this because yeah. the others are going to be bigger. From Good Karma, right? From Good Karma Brewing uh, Beer Co. So this is hopped, hopped with talus. So it's a low alcohol beer with talus, which is a, a hop. Bold. A hop uh, descended from a wild Mexican hop yeah. that has loads of unusual aromas. But also underneath it is all the classic kind of juicy hop aromas as well, like pineapple and stuff. So it's a really weird but glorious kind of hop. So I guess in a low alcohol beer, to have something that, that kind of full on is a really good idea. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna, you know, make it unique and make it, you know, really pop. Yeah. And it really does. Ooh, there's talus all over that. It's, it smells like umbonga, right? Yeah, it, it smells just tropical madness. Yeah, it's absolutely off. amazing. So fruit forward at the start, you think it's going to be a soda, yeah, and yeah. it's really lovely and dry and um, kind of crackery on the finish. That is just really quaffable. I could I could drink a lot of those, and especially as it's 0.5 percent. Yeah, it? I think Talus was an inspired choice because yeah. there's so much complexity to that hop. Yeah. It 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 makes up for the fact that there's less yeast character, there's less malt character, there's less. Um, you know, kind of that less of that building to bitterness and to complexity. It adds complexity right up front. Yeah, it's filling in a lot of the gaps that would yeah. otherwise be missing in, in quite a low alcohol beer. Exactly, yeah. I love the, the sort of message of, you know, spreading a little bit of mindfulness and, and, and trying to sort of be a bit more conscious about what we're putting in our bodies and what we're drinking. And, yeah, and I think I think yeah. alcohol's often seen as like a, a cure for issues. And I think he's just trying to say, no, no, alcohol isn't, beer is. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, the, the sort of social act of beer. Exactly. And being together with friends. Yep. Lucky dip number two. Let's see where we end up. We've ended up with Rock Leopard. Rock Leopard. Uh, so this is a 6% IPA. Uh, Rock Leopard was founded by Stacey Aie, who's been in the industry for 
I think about 20 years. Yeah. Um, I did a podcast with him on Goodby Hunting. There's a link in the descriptions in which he talks about how he, he got his start in the industry importing Copperberg. He was part of that That's whole that. thing right at the start. Stacey. Bringing that, not necessarily you great. What have you done for the world, <laughs> Stacey? Well, it's good to know he's doing really good stuff these days. Yeah, and, and yeah, he's he wanted to have his own brewery after yeah. some sort of failed startups and... Uh, he's basically learned to brew from scratch and now makes his own. He's not contract, he's sort of cuckoo brewing, so he goes Amazing. to the places and makes it himself. Uh, and I've loved, he had a great, two great beers called How Are You and How Are You Now? And How Are You On Your Good Days and How Are You Now? Oh. Uh, one was like a West Coast double IPA and then the latest one, How Are You Now, was a, a New England IPA all out. And they were both great. Great names as well. I mean, it's a classic New England, isn't Ooh. it? Yeah, nice. So this one's dominated by mosaic, which mm. you can probably tell by the... It's like a mango uh, played a lot of tennis. Got very sweaty. <laughs> sweaty mango. <laughs> oh. Really juicy and funky. Don't like, it, it hits you around the side. It's not just bitterness at the back. It's mm. like funky, almost acidic juiciness to the side. Um, that really complements, like, a New England yeast, like kind of nectarine, peachy vibes, and then you add really sweet, overripe mango. It's, it's just, it's a winning combination. I mean, the, the thing with this, which is great, is that, you know, people will not have heard of rock leopards at a shop in Tesco necessarily. And it's, it's, it's gonna champion them. Yeah. And at 10 pounds for four beers, no one's gonna be like, yeah. thinking that's And you're mind. gonna be mad impressed by that. And yeah. you go, like, I need to go find some more rock leopard. That's it, I think it's, it's almost like a calling card yeah. It's an entry into this sort of world. Absolutely. And all of the breweries here, all of them, I think, are contract brewing. And they, they have ambitions, all four of them, to build their own sites and their own tap rooms. Yeah. Um, where they can, you know, reach their target markets and, you know, spread the word about, you know, it's not just people that look like you and me. The White brew, dudes with beards. Exactly. Yeah. The brew craft beer and love craft beer. Yeah. Um, and so this is going to be such a big stepping stone to them getting those sites and it would have taken them years and years and years to get to that point um and yeah so having stacy have that kind of opportunity there is going to be great and hopefully accelerate his his business plans so speaking of breweries that do definitely want to found their own tap room echo are one of those people so echo they're a husband and wife team and they they have they're based in london they have like an african inspired brewery so they yeah. do put african flavors into what they're doing but equally they make classic new england ipas as well um, so this one is based on Simcoe. Awesome. We all love Simcoe. Um, I chatted to, to uh, the couple from Echo, and they were the thing they wanted to get across with the result of, of this is the fact that while you know classic craft beer spaces are run by incredibly open people um, and you know really want to be diverse, there's always going to be this thing that you know we can't necessarily fix, which is that you know a, a minority person walks into a craft beer bar and not many people are going to look like them. And it's always yeah. going to feel a little bit different as a result of that. And so what they really want to do is produce spaces where that doesn't happen, where you can walk in of any any persuasion, you know, any gender, any sexuality, any race, whatever it is, and immediately feel welcome. So yeah. for them, building a tap room is super, super important. Amazing. Um, I guess we, we're, you know, we're in quite a privileged position being two sort of hetero white men. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it's kind of hard for us to think sometimes uh, how how it might be awkward walking in somewhere if you don't if you feel other, you know, to the space you're going yeah. in. But I mean, it's a thing we talk about all the time about feeling other. You know, you walk into a like a proper locals bar and you feel like everyone's looking at you. You know, when we walk into those bars, they're not. They're just getting on with their life. They walk, see you walk through the door, go, all right, and then look back down. Yeah. But that's what it's like to minorities going into every craft beer bar in the world, essentially. Yeah. In, in Sorry, in the Western world. Um, so it's not something that we can necessarily fix overnight. It's something that's going to come as we get more diverse. And to create spaces where you don't feel that is super important to getting people involved and feeling welcome in the other spaces. And I think, the, the, obviously, the, 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 the greater the, the, the message of craft beer, beer spreads throughout different communities... The, the more kind of diverse these places will become. hundred percent. The more people we can bring in, the more we can find growth as a business as well and work harder to making sure that we're more sustainable, more diverse, more ethical. Um, so this is Simcoe. And yeah, you know, it's, it's got 
that nectar in that peach vibe like the other beers. I think they're all made with the same cloud water yeast, mm. but the Simcoe adds just a lovely pine note. You know, yeah, it's, it's still juicy. It's the it, juicy side. It's almost Simcoe. got that West Coast kind of pine. Yeah, to just it, a little bit. To, not yeah, obviously, but yeah, absolutely, nice. just a savouriness. What I love about Simcoe, I love somebody can explain this to me. It's a really smooth bitterness. You know, like we talk about alpha acids and beta acids and we talk about isomerization and utilization, but nobody's ever quite explained to me yet why the same amount uh, of IBUs of Simcoe is smoother than the same amount of, of most other hops. And yeah. it's just a smooth, long-lasting, smooth bitterness that comes from Simcoe. It's less spiky, isn't it? It doesn't less like go, spiky. oh, you know, you're not yeah. kind of like, ah. Yeah, There's, uh, just keep going and then... Something really joyous about the Simcoe hop and, and the finish it gives and the savouriness that it really nicely adds to a very sweet style of New England IPA. Lovely stuff. Yeah. So we move on to the final beer of the Beer with Big Ideas pack. Uh, and that is, I have to declare a friend of mine, uh, the lovely Lily Waite and Queer Brewing. Um, so this one is very similar recipe to all the others, but it's all citra. All citra all the way. It's all citra. Um, so Queer Brewing um, raised money and awareness for LGBTQ plus communities. Um, and Lily's been doing it for a long time now. Um, and I think really last year she was struggling for a bit of meaning with it all. Um, you know, she didn't feel like she could make a big enough difference. Mm. It was a huge toll on her as well, I think, like being an advocate for so much. And so actually having, you know, regular decent income coming in is going to be a big, big thing for her yeah. and, and for her partner um, in terms of turning this into a great you know, non-profit brewery that's going to get more and more diverse audiences in. Um, and there's no greater way to bring people into the craft beer industry than a fuck ton of citra. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see how this one is. I mean, citra is almost its own thing at this point. Like, I'd love to say, yeah, it's like grapefruit and mango and maybe some lychee or something, but it's just citra it's just to citra. me at this point. I've lost the context and just go, that smells like citra. Yeah. See, and that's got almost no bitterness compared to the others. No. Nope. Like, maybe they've, they've hopped it a lot, lot later in the boil just to really amp up that citra character. Because, um, you know, citra is a, a high alpha hop, so mm. you, you'd have to use it sparingly early. Um or else you'd end up with lots of bitterness. But this is just all out of citra assault. It's um, great stuff. Just loads of soft, sweet citrus fruit. I mean, you you I, almost bite into it. Yeah, I could probably drink a four pack of that on its own, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, it's wonderful. Mm. So if you find yourself in Tesco, please, please do have a search for this box because, yes, you're shopping in Tesco, but by doing this, by buying this box, you can really support some breweries that otherwise might have taken a much longer time to achieve their goals and to help us all reach the diversity that would really help the craft beer industry. Mm. And I, I mean, I just want to add, these these are great beers. Yes. Yeah. You're not buying them because they're diverse beers. You're buying them because they're great beers. And they just happen to I mean, to let's be, be honest, diverse. the beers themselves are not that diverse. The beers themselves <laughs> yeah. are beautiful IPAs made with different hops, like a single hop. Um, do you remember like Brewdog used to do, like a different hop? Yeah. They used to put four different hops into the same beer. And it's a great little experimentation of how hops vary. Big time. Um, but the brewers themselves um, are, you know, are going to be so vital. These wonderful people with great breweries and great businesses, it's going to be so vital to, to growing our industry in the way that it needs to grow. 100%, mate. So, Johnny, this is all wonderful stuff, but I do feel like there's a bit of an elephant in the room. There, yeah, there's an elephant in the room, and it's that. So along with this release, Cloudwater have put four of their own beers um, into supermarkets. And I think two of them were beers that used to go out to the independent trade, yeah. and they're bringing them back in and only brewing them exclusively for Tesco. And then yeah. they've brewed two new exclusive beers for Tesco. And that, you know, the whole craft beer industry has been so on board with this. But they've struggled with this. So... The beers that are new, Johnny, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. They're just for Tesco, they've made them. But the beers that they're taking away from the trade, is that an issue? It's an interesting question. So there's lots of retailers, that will, independent retailers, that will say it's not really about the beer that's in Tesco that's the, the issue. specific beer. Yeah, yeah, it's more about the fact that, you know, you and I or any beer fan 
can go to Tesco and pick up Cloudwater for between three and £3.50 a can now. And let's be honest, when it's in independent retailers, that's not a lot more than what the actual retailer will have paid, let alone what they actually charge the customer. So there's a real pricing issue there. Got you. Um, and there's lots of movements going on. You know, there's, There are campaigns out there to try and get the tax changed in the UK so that if you're buying it from a supermarket, you pay more tax than if you're buying it from an independent shop or on draft. And I personally think that would be a hugely positive step, although how you define those retailers those against points? the supermarket ones, yeah. I, don't, I don't quite know. That needs ironing out. But so basically the issue that independent retailers have with it is that by having those three to £3.50 Cloudwater beers mm. in there, there's two issues. One is you, people might go, yeah, it's just a Tesco around the corner or there's an Indy five minutes walk away, but we can get Cloudwater in both. Yeah. And then on top of that, you've got the issue of um, people walking into an independent sh- shop and going, why is your cloud water six quid yeah. when in Tesco it's three pound fifty? So there's there's a there's a bit of an issue potentially with just sort of brand understanding of the brand and what you're getting when you shop at a Tesco. Exactly that. Compared so to what, the, the sort of the choice that you're getting when you go to an independent. Yeah. So for me, the most important thing that cloud water can do, and I do not begrudge them at all for moving into Tesco because in the UK beer uh, beer market, there's so little opportunities for growth. Mm. Our like particularly on trade, so our draft opportunities are so limited because most of the pubs here are told what to serve. They yeah. can't choose, it's tied, right? By big guys coming in and either owning the pubs or telling you what to serve mm. in return for like 10, 15 grand. So there's not a lot of opportunities. So I understand why Cloudwater might have gone in there to get the growth. But what they need to really hammer home is that the beers that are served in Tesco, including this box and including their core stuff, let's crack it and have a go. That's a different kettle of fish. It's not made in the same place. It's not going to be made with exactly the same ingredients. It's not going to have the same necessarily tank time. It's not going to have necessarily the cold chain that means that these IPAs are served in their absolute best, um, uh, in in their absolute prime. And it also means that the ingredients going in might not be as good as they are. Yeah. So that's what they need to help these independent shops get across to say, look, I know it's two quid more and it's totally up to you as the customer. Is it worth two quid more? I think the thing is, um, again, it's like people at my shop in Tesco, uh, this might introduce them to cloud water in the same way that introduces them to rock leopards and good karma. And, you know, if you can use it as a stepping stone to then go on and explore because you're, you're into craft beer, you're like, that's great beer. I want to know more about that. Mm-hmm. As long as people don't stop at that and not progress, then surely it cannot be a totally bad thing that it's in, it, that it's in a supermarket. Yeah, you'd really hope so. You know, the, the, There's two arguments to this. One is that it brings new people in, and that's certainly what these guys are going to be hoping. They're going to be really counting on the idea that this is going to bring in new people. Now, think of the accessibility. This is going into yeah. about 500 stores. You know, there's not a lot more independent bottle shops than that in the UK. So the, the reach that these guys have, it's not just about the finances. It's about no. how many people they can reach. It's about breaking through that kind of barrier that, you know, isn't any one individual's fault, but is a societal's fault, saying you're more likely to be in Tesco maybe buying some beer than, you know, if you're from a certain demographic than you are to be in the trendy independent bottle shop in the rich part of town, yeah. right? So they're really hoping this is going to reach new people. It's going to be more accessible. And hopefully it's going to do the same for Cloudwater. People are going to pick up that beer at three quid. They're going to have a risk on it at three quid, which is so much easier than at six quid, and, and fall in love with it and hopefully start looking start looking for independent shops. Yeah, three quid on the door doesn't sound that bad to me to, tr- to try a new experience. I think, I think that's exactly It's three quid on the door to get in. Yeah. And that has to be a good thing. Right. That has to be. And it has to be, I say that both in like a logical, it should be, but also from a Cloudwater point of view and from, you know, Northern Monk, a Thornbridge, a Wildcard, all these breweries that are in supermarkets, they've got to be working their arse off mm. to make sure that everybody who tries that beer or that beer, that beer, that beer, that beer, that beer is then going, right, that is the first of many. Where do I go next? That's it. And they need to champion independent bottle shops and independent bars off the back of that. 
So guys, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this, particularly if you've got any ideas as to how these breweries can really capitalize on their opportunities and make sure that they're doing the best thing with the opportunity that you know they've worked very hard to get for themselves. So hit us up below. We'll also be talking about it in our podcast and there's links below uh, to my new story for Good Bit Hunting, to my podcast with Stacey Aye and all the other stuff if you want to learn more about this situation. And um, there endeth the craft lesson. <laughs> cheers cheers so, yeah, to good beer. Thanks for bearing with us and being serious. Cheers to good beer.